Okay, cycle two, week three, drawing. This week, um, our focus is upside down drawing. And um, the artist that she has kind of chosen to illustrate this is um, John Audubon. And this is where, this is going to be one of those weeks where if you want to uh, bring in your laptop or your iPad or something and show some of these pictures, it would be, it would be totally fine. But she gives a, you know, just a brief art and science history lesson about John James Audubon and about his, um, you know, his love of birds and kind of his background, um, a little bit of his life. Um, some of it is, you know, this is completely optional for you. If I think the older students would be very interested to hear this, the younger students may not care whatsoever. But the first page in this um, lesson is kind of a history of Audubon. And she gives us several, um, several pictures that he has done. This is actually a portrait of him from 1826. And you see, these are beautiful, you guys. They're, they're really well done. Um, this is a Carolina parakeet that was drawn by, or painted by Audubon. Um, this is a tundra swan and a northern bobwhite and red-shouldered hawk. Um, so these are all drawings that he did, artwork that he did, to try to capture birds in real life. And again, you don't have to show all of these. You don't have to show any of these. Um, you can show all of them. It's kind of up to you and what you think your students would really enjoy. Um, obviously, I mean, there are several in here that you could choose from. American Flamingo. And it's interesting to note how very lifelike they are. Um, some of these are like this one is really lifelike, except there's not really a background. Um, so it's kind of obvious that he was doing it more from a scientific um, perspective where he was trying to capture the essence of what the animals looked like more than he was really trying to paint a picture just to be just for it to be pretty. So um, the book like in her lesson, she says one of the quickest ways to draw something with accurate proportions is to look for or identify some of its basic lines and shapes. So this is a review and this is where you'll go back and cover again your oils and the um, elements of shape. But she talks about how our brains kind of jump ahead and we think we know what it is that we want to draw. And so we miss important details because we already think we know what the subject look like, looks like. So this is where drawing upside down can actually help us and it fools our brain so that we focus more on the details and not jump ahead. She says drawing upside down can help our left verbal brains step aside and give our shy right visual spatial brains a chance to really see where there are lines and shapes. So um, she gives a link to a book called Drawing on the Right Side of the Brain by Eddie by Betty Edwards. And if you're interested in learning more about that, you could check that out. She gives some vocabulary really that speaks more to um, the history of John Audubon's life. So if you're going to skip that part, you probably don't really need to cover much of the vocabulary, but it talks about the Panic of 1819, what the neoclassical period was, um, romanticism or the romantic period of arts, um, those kinds of things. And again, this is not something that you need to, you know, feel pressure to, you know, make sure that your kids know or learn, but just let them, you know, be aware. And then the project begins um, with uh, the shapes doing something upside down. So what we're going to do is we're going to practice by turning our reference drawing upside down and identify what the shapes are from there. And we, what she's done is she has simplified some of Audubon's art into line drawings. And that's what we're gonna use for this, for this particular um, project. So what she says to do is when you pass out your sheets to your students, have them turn it face up, but upside down. So this is the simplest one. This is the simple line drawing of Audubon's wild turkey. Let me see if I can find it find the picture here. 
here is his painting of the wild turkey. And she has converted it into a line drawing. So you're going to give this to your student and have them turn it upside down. And instead of looking for the bird, instead of trying to identify the bird, look for the basic lines and shapes. Um, remember that we're going to go back to what we said in week one, and we're going to study what it is that we're drawing before we start drawing. So really encourage your kids to spend a good amount of time studying what it is that they're that they're going to be drawing. Now what you want to do is you want to have your kids place a blank sheet of paper next to the line drawing and begin to draw the lines the same size and shape that you see them on your paper. Um, if this is still a little too hard, she says take another sheet of paper and cover it up. So maybe cover up like the bottom two thirds and just draw that. And then uncover it and just draw that. And then uncover the rest and just draw that. And then when you're done, turn both of them right side up and just compare side by side. You know, how did I do? An optional thing would be to compare your drawing to the detailed version of the same line drawing and then to the original painting. And then you can add colors and details. So I'll show you what she's talking about as far as the detailed version here in just a second, because we're about to talk about the modifications for the different levels. So what she says for the younger students, this might be pretty difficult for a four year old to draw this even upside down. So she recommends taking tracing paper and allow the students to trace it upside down. Make sure that they're doing it upside down so that they get the idea of, oh, I'm focusing on these individual lines and I'm not really focusing on drawing a bird because I want it to be upside down. So you guys will all have tracing paper pads in your um, tutor boxes and you can use those for any students that you think would, be, um, would enjoy tracing it better. Um, the simple turkey line drawing is the easiest, so that might be for level two. Level three would be the simple line drawing of the woodpecker. So this is a line drawing of one of the woodpeckers in the triple woodpecker painting that I showed you. So level four would be this one, having, drawing this one upside down. Any of them can trace it. Any of them can do it upside down if they would like. I'm going to show you the, I think I showed you the picture of the woodpeckers, but just in case, um, this is what it looks like in real life, what he, what he painted. So they can draw that upside down and then they can color it in if they would like. Um, for encouragement to do at home, he, uh, or she said to redraw the birds on two feet by three feet paper. So that's big. Those are big pieces of paper, but it simulates Audubon's. He printed, he printed his on extra large prints. So those would be really big. And it's interesting to consider how different you draw something when you're making it larger than the one that you're looking at. So it's an exercise, not just in line um, and shape, but also in size and proportion. And then another thing would be to take a photo of a bird in your backyard or look at some pictures in bird books and then turn them upside down and draw them. So those would be extra things that you could encourage your students to do from home. And that is drawing week three.